In the last video, we learned that organic compounds are molecules that contain carbon. We also learned about two biologically important classes of organic compounds, carbohydrates and lipids. Carbs and lipids are undoubtedly important, but there's, a, there's little doubt that another class of biological macromolecules is the most important, proteins. Proteins are incredibly diverse and perform a wide array of different functions. It's pretty reasonable to argue that the differences among organisms, the differences between people, the differences between people and chimpanzees, the differences between chimpanzees and corn plants, they all come down to differences in the types of proteins that are produced. Proteins are polymers that are built from monomers called amino acids. There are 20 different amino acids in biological circumstances. Four of them are shown here, alanine, valine, lysine, and aspartic acid. All amino acids have the same fundamental structure. Hooked onto a central carbon is an NH2 group called the amino group, a COOH group called the carboxylic acid or just acid group, and a hydrogen atom. Together, these form the backbone of the amino acid. One other thing is hooked onto the central carbon, the R group or side group. The molecular makeup of the side groups gives the 20 different amino acids their unique properties. You can see the side groups of both alanine and valine are made of CH2 and CH3 groups. Those are both made of nonpolar covalent bonds. A protein that is rich with alanine and valine might be water insoluble because of all of the nonpolar side groups. By contrast, both lysine and aspartic acid have side groups that contain polar OH bonds. A protein rich in lysines and aspartic acid will, will probably be water soluble. And a protein with one region rich in alanine and valine and another region rich in lysine and aspartic acid might be both water insoluble and water soluble. The other 16 amino acids have their own specific side groups and confer specific characteristics to the proteins they're part of. Two of those amino acids, cysteine and methionine, contain sulfur in their side groups. Amino acids connect together by way of dehydration synthesis reactions. A protein's specific sequence of amino acids is called the primary structure. Proteins generally do not exist as straight chains of amino acids, though. Instead, they fold up on themselves because of hydrogen bonding between polar groups of amino acids in different parts of the protein chain. This forms secondary and tertiary structures. Finally, different protein chains can combine together to form a quaternary structure. Each protein can take on a variety of different folding structures, and each folding structure may produce different characteristics. This is an example of another general biological principle that you'll encounter over and over again. Structure determines function. The specific folded structure of a protein determines its function. If that folding structure is altered, the protein function will be altered. We'll see this many times during the rest of the class. Proteins. They're the most diverse and the most functionally important of the biological molecules. They're so important that each cell has a dedicated library of recipes to make its proteins. This library is called the genome, and it's filled with recipes called genes. Genes are made of a fourth type of biological macromolecule, nucleic acids. You've heard of the nucleic acid DNA, and maybe the closely related molecule RNA. We'll devote a whole chapter to DNA and RNA, so we'll leave that discussion for later. Carbohydrates, lipids, proteins, and nucleic acids, the four, ma four main biological macromolecules that are the building materials for all cells. We'll see this as we move on to the next topics, Chapter 3, Cells.